Hi Church, Pastor Jeff here with another Trinity Check-In, and I want to share a moment that I had this morning. But first, a little context. So, we're in the season of Lent. We're reading through the Gospel of Mark as a church. If you're uh, watching this video, chances are you already know that. What you may not remember, or maybe you weren't there, uh, on Ash Wednesday, at the start of the season, I, I started us off by uh, with an analogy. I said, think about what a football player looks like. Now, think about what a basketball player looks like. Very different, right? Uh, but why? Why do they look different? Well, because the sport that they practice is different. And the things that you do in football eventually shape your muscles to look like a football player. The things that you do in basketball shape you to look like a basketball player. Both of them very different than a ballerina. Yet, I'd believe it if the ballerinas were the strongest of any of them. <laughs> but because they practice something very different. And in the same way, we can talk about Christian beliefs all you want, and it's important to, but it's the practices of Christianity that make us look on the inside and the out sometimes uh, as uh, make, make our lives look like a Christian life, make our heart look like a Christian life. It's the practices that do it, and that Lent is one of the key practices that shapes us to look like a Christian. Uh, and it's because in it, we walk through the story of Jesus. We remember all of these stories that we've been reading in the Gospel of Mark. But in particular, it comes to a head when we get to Holy Week. Now, if you've been reading along with those scriptures, you know that it's already beginning to ramp up. I can already tell a difference in Jesus's tone. It's getting more serious, more urgent. We're really coming to the uh, to the peak of the story. Uh, and it's not quite Holy Week yet. Sunday will be Palm Sunday, and that's where we'll begin the uh, Jesus's actual road to the cross, where the story is its most Oh, difficult? Oh, all of it's difficult in its own way, uh, if we really take it seriously. But the most dramatic, the most serious, I don't have the right word, but you know what I mean, right? Well, okay, here's what happened to me this morning. Here we are in this moment, but I'm a pastor. <laughs> and one of the practices that's helped me to uh, grow as a pastor is to write my sermons enough ahead of time that I have time to think about it and tweak. Uh, and usually I write the Wednesday, the week before the Sunday, which means that this morning my job was to sit down and write the sermon for Easter. So, put yourself in my shoes for a minute. Here we are in these stories. Uh, the, uh, I've been reading the daily scriptures from Mark. I've been noticing that Jesus' tone is getting more serious. I know we're heading into the most difficult parts of the story. And yet, this morning, I sat down at my computer and typed, He is risen. <laughs> now, I know it's true. Of course it's true. We are the Easter people. But at the same time, at this point in the story, it almost seems wrong to write it. It seems early. But, but yet, that's part of what it means to live as a Christian in the year 2024, is that we both walk in the story of Jesus, we both walk in the footsteps of Jesus, yet we know the outcome, yet we know where the story is headed. And it may feel odd at times to hold both of those truths at once, but yet that's part of what it means to be a Christian to both walk in the footsteps of Jesus, even when it's difficult, but also have the hope of the resurrection that is to come. Uh, and so, well, we're not quite to the peak of Holy Week yet. As I said, the readings are going to get more difficult after Sunday, uh, more difficult in their, in their content as Jesus is arrested and is on trial and is tortured and heads towards the cross. But yet we read it knowing where it's headed, yet we read it knowing that Easter's on the other side. And somehow, living in that space in the middle, living in that in-between time, as it's sometimes called, is what it means to be a Christian in 2024. And there's something very good about holding both of those things together. So I don't know what you're going through right now. Hopefully the readings are, uh, are, are good for you. Hopefully they're feeding you. Hopefully you're growing as you read them. I don't know what uh, each one of you is going through in your life right now, but uh, I, I do know that some of in our church are going through very difficult days right now, and I'm sure there are more that I don't know about. Each of us will go through difficult days sooner or later, but I hope you know that when you do, 
when you find yourself in the place where you need to walk in Jesus's footsteps in the most difficult ways, that you also have that moment of sitting down at your computer to type, he is risen. Because it's a good reminder, a, a reminder so that we don't forget the rest of the story and what God is really doing here. All right, I'm not gonna say he is risen again because we have to walk the journey before we say it all together. But I hope you all know it in your hearts because it never, ever, ever stops being true no matter what. All right, I hope you are, no matter what, ha uh, finding at least some good in the day, church. Uh, and I hope that you're continuing to walk the journey well. I look forward to seeing you this Sunday. It is Palm Sunday, so we will have um, the kids at 9 o'clock. We'll have all of the palm leaves. I think the choir is going to process, if I remember so uh, correctly. If I don't remember correctly, sorry about that choir. Uh, and it will sing Hosanna together. We'll remember Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem into Jerusalem, and by the end of the service, we will enter into that most holy of weeks in the Christian year as we prepare ourselves to say the phrase that I'm not going to say anymore until the time comes. Be well, church. I will see you soon.